He was brought by the docent to a headstone jutting up from the ground at an angle tilted to one side. The edges were well-worn, and, while there were lichens obscuring the text engraved into the 288-year-old stone, the markings clearly indicated that this was the site where, a few feet below ground, the bones of his ancestor could be found. The night before, he had wandered around the cemetery for nearly an hour, silently beseeching his ancestor to reveal himself. His entreaties fell upon long dead ears. He stood at the grave site staring intently at the stone that bore the name of his ancestor. He knew that just beneath his feet the bones of the boy who lived among the Esopus were there. He knew this within his mind, but could not feel it in his own bones. The body of his ancestor had become one with the earth just as the bodies of the Esopus met the same fate on the side of the river on that day, centuries before, when his ancestor was recaptured and brought here to eventually die at Newpalt. 